Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Ozark Season 4, Episode 5. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, our opening finally gives me the answers I've been begging, like, asking the entire time. Like, once again, I have been watching these one at a time, so I'm just getting information that Mel used to be a cop. I'm like, okay, that makes a lot more sense. And Because I'm like, why are you going so hard into pain about this Helen thing? Like, is that even the real reason why, like, did, was Helen just an end? Because, like, he has all these cards and stuff, so he must be a real P.I. now, but he's a disgraced cop because he basically got caught doing drugs in the uh, evidence locker. Uh... Like, no getting around that, so, but apparently, you know, based on what Jim found out about him, he's really good at his job, he's relentless, and I'm like, oh yeah, we definitely see that, but like, that's why I'm like, is it, is it just because his cop instincts kicked in, and he's like, there's something bigger going on here, I just know I can smell it, boy, oh boy, I love it when he rolls up at the, the Bird family home, and he's asking all these questions, and I love that, and just like, when it was all said and done, Marty's like, I hate him. And she's like, I just like hate that guy. And then uh, you have Wendy being like, yep. I'm like, oh, I'm with you. I'm with you, Marty. I went on a tangent about how much I hate the dude. Once again, it's just like, he, if you flip the script and made this like any other show, I said this last episode, I'll say it again. Flip the script and made this some other show, he'd be the main protagonist because you love how adamant he is and how go in like into this he is. But it's because it is this show and it is these characters that we're following that I'm Team Bird that I'm like, man. Fuck this guy. Go away. Stop investigating. Um, especially because the narrative he's creating. Now, I don't know whether he really believes this or whether he's just using this as a, a way to kind of get to Wendy. But his narrative is that, like, well, Helen's the one that locked him up in the first place, you know. So your brother kind of maybe not in the, most, in the best mental state ended up sneaking out, breaking out killing her and then maybe disappearing so that's the narrative he's kind of crazy he's like and the moment he's like yeah helen i just need a signature or body i don't need anything i'm like shut up he keeps using that specific wording he's like oh i can't prosecute or anything it's like i'm thinking he maybe he thinks if he can find a big enough case because this mm, his cop instincts are kicking in that there's something much bigger here either it is his instincts or he took this job specifically because he knows there's so much more going on here. And if he's able to unravel all the stuff that's going down in the Ozarks, he's going to be back in. Like, he's going to potentially get his badge back and everything, gain back his reputation. So, we've only gotten, like, this little peek into his life. I mean, to be fair, we've seen what happens to cops who've gotten obsessed with all this. Uh, granted, it was other circumstances, more specifically Ruth's dad, but we saw how it ended for Petty. Petty died, but that was, you know, he kept getting, like, smack dab in the middle of all of this, uh, at the, the crux of it, and he was just obsessed and dogged about it, but at the same time, it's like, once again, that was on Roof's dad, he's the one that actually killed Petty, and he kind of lost his temper and stuff like that, but still, but it, it kind of, it gives you, like, Petty vibes is kind of what I'm get, getting from this, uh, from Mel, so we'll, we'll see, um, because obviously, because, because, she, because at first I thought, with all those uh, posters of Ben around, I was like, oh my god, Wendy. I was like, oh my god, this is all your fault, because you had to put him in the general zeitgeist, but they're posted all over the place, and initially, uh, Wendy's like, this is on you, you're trying to hurt me or something like that, and he was like, I didn't do anything about it, and he never said it was Darlene, but she figured it out on her own, Darlene's doing this, this is what she was talking about last episode when she was like, why, it's like, no, let's do something, it's gonna help your cousin, because she made that whole point about like, oh, look what she's doing to your, the, the, your boyfriend and stuff like that, using him like this on her platforms with these lies, it's like, yeah, Darlene legitimate, because like, oh, like, because she's with Wyatt, that makes Ruth family, so she wanted to help out Ruth, and it's like, oh, being able to stick it to uh, Wendy at the same time, oh, that's a bonus. So, that's kind of interesting. So, to find out Darlene was like, man, once again, these are some big-time criminals who could be just as petty. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, at the same time, uh, obviously, this is a big episode of, cool, Marty and Wendy aren't on the same page. Yet again, it's like, oh, tell me something that's not new. Uh, but I love, like... Obviously, it's like they have their disagreements about Charlotte. She says, like, oh, Charlotte doesn't need to go, like, the, you know, college. Like, plenty of people survive not going to college. It's like, 
Because Wendy's like, once we're afraid of free of Navarro, we'll have whatever power and influence we need. That was her whole like diatribe to like uh, get um, Jonah more on her side. So now it is a situation of uh, she's not really giving the SATs all her all because she's got so much other stuff on her mind because it all seems so less important than the fame, all the business side of things that's keeping your family going, that's keeping your family alive. It's kind of like, yeah, school and all that, my future, that won't have much of a future if like this Navarro stuff doesn't end positively, you know? So, but um, I love that Marty's like, no, we're supposed to be a united front. And she was like, oh, we're supposed to be a united front? Like, you going behind my back to Ruth? He's like, it's not the same thing. It's just, um... Because it's just like, once again, like... Oh, you've done stuff behind my back. It's like, yeah, but Wendy, to be fair, Marty's going about... I feel like Marty's going about things a little bit smart. But also, it's just like, at the same time, it's just like... You've been kind of... You've been... You kind of out of pocket lately let's kind of let, let's uh let's call a spade a spade wendy's been like uh she's she's tripping bro let's kind of leave it at that but i mean like but I, I love that so much about wendy how like messed up that character is like i said ever since we got that taste like i always kind of had a thing for wendy just from the beginning but dark season two turned me all the way around on wendy be like i liked wendy before i loved wendy since season two i was like i love this character how dark and messed up she is because I say it time and time again, if anything, I feel like she's more so the um, Heisenberg. I mean, they both are the Walter White ones, again, not trying to make the Breaking Bad comparison, but everyone makes the Breaking Bad comparison. You kind of can't help it. But if you were to call anyone the Heisenberg, they both kind of are. But she definitely leans into more darker angles of Heisenberg. Heisen, I'd say Heisenberg. Heisenberg, like, no, we're not talking about Jesse Heisenberg. Uh, Heisenberg, like she has wall elements, but she seems like she has a darker element to wall where uh, Marty seems like he just has some more like like the strategist sides of uh, Walt, but uh, nevertheless. But I also love, once again, nothing can go 100% right because while Ruth's setting up this deal with Marty to get the drugs and everything, uh, because it's like, oh, and I, I thought it was interesting, they're letting, uh, they let, uh, God, Claire Shaw, like, in on their plan of like, right, we're going to replace it with Darlene's heroin. And it's like, wait, but it has to be pure. Like I'd have to basically pay off other people if it doesn't come out like, right. She's like, I might as well just be getting it from Tasmanian. And then it's like, yeah, but you'll be paying four times. Like, just let us do this. Test it out. Looks pure. So Darlene's stuff is good. They made the deal. Sadly, Darlene decided to go behind not only Frank Sr.'s bat because he wanted nothing to do with this because he knows this was mixed up with the cartel. Uh, he doesn't want to be on their bad side again. So he went behind not only her back, but also Ruth's back, which Ruth is also going behind her back to deal with the birds because she knows if she went to Darlene, Darlene would not want to do business with the birds. She was reluctant about the carry thing. Then the carry thing blew up in their face. So yeah, like she's going to be even less reluctant to listen to you business-wise potentially. So... Yeah, both of them are making their own moves. And I, I have to correct myself, because I, I talked about it before. I hadn't rewatched season three. I didn't remember she shot his dick off. I was Because last episode, I was like, oh, yeah, Frank Jr., she crushed his genitals. It's like, no, she shot his genitals off. Once again, I didn't rewatch season three prior to watching this. So, yeah. Uh, but she's making a deal with him. And he even was like, wait, why would you come to me? And she's like, yeah, she's like, I always heard you were smart. He was like, from who? And she just kind of laughs. I'm like, I love how you didn't give him an answer. He's just kind of like, you're playing into his ego. Because she's like, right, I'm sorry for shooting your penis off. But she's like, oh, I heard that uh, they've been helping you with that, that uh, there's a lot more going on. Because even he was like, why would I do business with you? You shot my genitals off. So, but uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, with this much, don't tell your dad. You'd be having six, if you're smart, seven figures in your pocket. So it's like, cool. By the time Ruth finds out, it's already been sold to Frank Jr. But it gets even more complicated because Frank Jr. sold it to two other buyers. And you're like, wait, what? It's like, yeah. And so I love that, like, it's like, okay. It's like, wait. I love that uh, Claire's like, wait, who's Frank Jr.? Yeah, that's uh, Kansas mom. She's like, how many heroin dealers do you know? He's like, just uh, just the three. I'm like, yeah, it, this is a clusterfuck of a rodeo, and I'm here for it. And, like, Claire is getting, like, 
freaked out because it's like, no, we need to jump on this immediately. Like, uh, this is, it's like, all right, so Marty's working with Ruth and Ruth is like, just because she's fisting your ass right now doesn't mean you get to shove it yours up mine. So it's like, right, we're going to get, he's like, all right, I'm going to get a hundred K to the buyer, the first buyer and the second buyer. And, and she, Ruth's like, and you're going to give me a hundred grand. He's like, what'd you say? She's like, and you're going to give me, he's like, no, no, I heard you. She's like, then repeat it. He's like a hundred grand for you. And she's like, yep. So... I love that, like, they're working their way through it, alright, finally met up with Frank Jr., met up with the first buyers, alright, we're good, met up with the second buyers, they didn't like it one bit, they're like, nah, this seems suspicious, like, uh, you gave us these drugs, and now you want to immediately buy them back, then you're gonna, like, all these cops are gonna show up, so they're like, no, it's like, oh, cool, 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 this ain't gonna go great, awesome, so it's like, right, Frank Jr.'s like, I'm not about to roll up on the place, because he knows how crazy they are, he doesn't want Ruth to do it either, but, it did lead to some, like, good between him and Ruth because he's like, right, actually, like, I'm sorry about what happened to you. Like, he's like, I should have never roughed you up the way um, I did. He's like, I am sorry. He's like, I know it must, like, chap you that, like, they didn't kill me, right? And she's just kind of like, yeah, almost kind of like, it's fine. But I think hearing him say, like, I think after everything that's kind of going down, well, he kind of got his penis blown off. Does it? I don't know if that makes him even in her mind, but I think him apologizing was kind of like a, she's like, well, I shouldn't have thrown you off the boat, so that's kind of on me. So, I'm like, the fact that she's like, I was like, oh, wow, I would have never expected that. Like, but I think it's like, you know, it's like, right, he did a stupid thing, he did a terrible thing. He kind of, like, karma got a bat because his whole penis got blown off, so I guess she's kind of like, yeah, like, I kind of got my retribution in some regards, so we're both still alive, so there, there's that, so let's let's keep it all even, so obviously it's like, cool, compound and everything, uh, Claire's guy wants to go in guns a blazing. Ruth's like, let me handle this, she goes in to talk to the guy, sadly one of his people slaps her, and like, I guess she knew, like, right, these are like the crazy types you don't want to mess with, it's like, cool, I work for Omar Navarro, and it's like, oh yeah, blah, 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 like, who's that guy, that guy's working with Navarro, like, it's like, then why are you trying to buy the drugs back, it's like, she's like, come on, like, you're missing out on a hundred thousand, he's like, don't tell me how to run my business, I'm curious how she got it done. We don't know. She had to have made some side deal or something that maybe Marty and them don't know about. But she was able to get everything back. Because I love that Marty was like, yo, like, don't go in there because you're going to end up getting Ruth killed. Because despite everything, it is a thing of like, it probably would be easier just to go in there guns and blazing. Granted, that'd probably draw more attention. But also like, no, despite everything, he does care about Ruth. Hell, he was even like, oh, yeah, this is bring you back. And she's like, oh, yeah, when you helped me, made me help you move a couch and then, like, move all the stuff to your house. Yeah, I'm already, like, it was good memories and stuff. And it's like, oh, so how was Jonah? It's like, oh, he's good. And he's a whiz kid. Like, this is him at 14. Like, when he's as old as you, he'll be unstoppable. And he's like, all right. And then Marty's just saying, like, just look after him. Like, he doesn't push, and he doesn't push, like, because he's not trying to, like, keep a stranglehold on his kids. And it's like, right, he wants to keep, like, if this is where Jonah needs to be, he doesn't want it. Like, he knows handling things the way Wendy has is just going to push him away further. So he just wants to go, like, right, like, just make sure you look after my son. And there's this part of Ruth that's kind of looked at. And I think it's moments like that that made her like Marty. That despite everything, her issues and everything, it's mainly with Wendy, but it's also with Marty. It's like, the, they didn't handle the Frank Jr. thing. Now, this Ben situation, yes, that was kind of on more uh, Wendy, but still. So I think she still holds some affinity for Marty. She's always looked up to him and admired him. Um, he was kind of like a father figure, a mentor of sorts to her. So I think despite everything, there's still that bit of her. And no, no, like, right, you're not trying to beg me to bring your son home. You just want me to look after him. And it's like, I think it's, mom it's stuff like that that makes her go like, I like you a lot, Marty, despite like our beefs, our issues, our disagreements and stuff. So I just thought that was kind of a really nice touching moment between them two. But uh, yeah, uh, finally got the drugs back. So it's like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Everything worked out on that front. Granted, Marty did tra take uh, the gun from Claire's guy, as Ruth said, I think his name's Connor or something. And then like put it on him and the guy was like, Stepping forward, and he, like, like knocked the shit out of uh, Marty and took the gun back. And he was like, get back in the car. I was like, Jesus, poor Marty. But uh, luckily, that worked out. Then let's focus on Wendy's side of things, because all these posters, like, started pissing her off. And so she decided, you know what, I'm going to get Darlene back. I'm going to file a missing persons report. And you're like... And even the sheriff's like, why'd you wait till now? And she's like, oh, my brother, I just want him to be found. Like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, uh-huh. And even the sheriff's like, her little words were, uh-huh. 
I'm like, uh huh, 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 huh. That sheriff is pretty good. It's like you got two cops sniffing around, and last thing you need. Um, but that's interesting. Uh, so the missing person gets filed, and now it um, it takes away a little bit of the power Darlene was kind of getting. It's like, cool. She's like, oh, Darlene. Because when she called up Darlene, I thought it was Darlene's like voicemail she was leaving. But the moment she's like, Darlene, it's like, oh, Darlene was just speechless the entire time. Uh, she was like, yeah, I filed a missing person. But I should thank you a lot for that. So, Which is sad because Marty found a more, I guess... Not diplomatic, but he found a more subtle approach to it to get Charlotte to talk to Wyatt. But the sad thing is when Wyatt was away from his phone, Darlene went through it. And I was scared for him. I'm like, oh, man, don't don't let Darlene catch you in a, like her in jealous mode or something, because that could be an issue. I'm, I'm, I'm scared for Wyatt because even he like has been a little off around Darlene and she's noticed it, too. Uh, so... And also, like, her jumping down Jonah's throat. It's like, no, you told your mother didn't. It's like, oh, like, you're playing both sides. He's like, no, I didn't tell her anything. She might, I didn't know it was a secret. It's like, you don't tell nobody my business, boy, or I could cut a lot more than your hair. You're like, Jesus. And even, like, why? It's like, hey, man, he's just a kid. She's like, you don't interfere. You know, so it's like, cool. Tell me something about you. It's like, okay, Sheriff Nix, they, they uh, cremated his body. Granted, they're not the ones that killed him. Javi did. They just had to help cover it up. But still, I mean, to be fair, Sheriff Nix is also dead because of you. Because Javi's here because the birds didn't do a good enough job of shutting you down. So, that's also the thing, too. We didn't touch on Javi at all this episode. Uh, how's he going to feel knowing that you feel the void of the drugs that he was supposed to be bringing with Darnell? I'm not Darnell, uh, Darlene's drugs. How he's going to feel about that? Probably going to piss him off even more. Like, oh, you're going to like cutting me out of this. It's like, well, you're the one that decided this not work and we need this to keep going. It's like, it is, I get it. It's for the operation and stuff, but he's like, no, this operation needs to be stopped. Uh, just so we can find out who's responsible for like ratting us out and yada, 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 and so on and so forth. It's going to be interesting to see what his his reaction is going to be uh, to the, all of this. But now Darlene knows that they got rid of uh, Nix's body. Uh, she ended up confronting Wyatt later on because Wyatt was like, hey, maybe we should take down the website and stuff like that. He's like, oh, whose idea was that? Who's asking? He's like, no one. She's like, yeah, we had one rule. Never lie to me. It's like, yeah, don't get on Darlene's bad side. You've seen firsthand and it's still shaking you to your core. And uh, He's like, right. You can tell he's kind of scared of Darlene now. So, I'm sure being around Charlotte again probably like probably made that feel a little weird too. Just because it's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, sorry about all that. She's like, no, I get it. All the stuff that's happened because of like my family and stuff. I get that, but she asked for a big favor, and the fact is, he was willing to do it shows that they're on good enough terms. So, we also had Mel. Um, stopping by Ruth's place to get answers. He's like, yeah, I don't need a body or anything. At first, he's asking about Helen and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah. It's like, well, uh, Ben, he was your boyfriend, right? She's like, yeah, that was over. He's like, oh, it must be the, they ever hit you, you know, drugs and stuff like that. He was, she's like, he never had a drug problem. It's like, oh, but didn't his sister, she's like, yeah, I bet that's what she said. It's like, oh, you pretty close with Marty and Wendy Bird? She's like, I thought this was about Helen. It's like, oh, yeah, but I'm still like, yeah, the moment that started coming up, Ruth is like, yeah, I'm done with this. Uh, he's like, well, here's my card if you have any more information. She's like, I won't. But it's like, yeah, he's a, he's like a bloodhound. He's got to sit now, and he will not back down. He will not let go. So that's continuing to be a thorn in their side. Uh, Wendy had her share of things this episode, interestingly enough, uh, to get Schaefer on her side because he's like, oh, my son... Well, son got caught up in like some wire transfer and stuff because he basically, uh, it was almost like some insider trading stuff of like, oh, it seemed like he knew this proprietary like stuff was happening with my grandson making some kind of proprietary, uh, pri uh, proprietary like technology. And my son is like, yeah, what, what, uh, what father wouldn't invest in his own son's business is what the, uh, Schaefer tried to spin it as. Um, as why his son invested in his grandson's business, even though it was like obviously not above board. But it's like, yeah, I need you to find out what's in the FBI file in case it ended up being nothing. So Wendy went through the channels of obviously using uh, Maya to get the information. 
I guess she told Maya, like, right, uh, Marty was going to crack some of that wiretapping stuff, like, some of that wire, wire fraud stuff for them. And she's like, yeah. I love Maya's like, right. Uh, we could, I could give Marty a badge because I'm sure, like, you know, it's that hacker thing of, like, you know, right, you find a hacker out there and then the government, like, right, brings you in because the best way to stop other hackers is to bring in a hacker of your own. Like, if you bring someone in from the outside and bring them into the fold, you know, turn your enemy into your ally. Um, friends close, enemies closer, almost type of thing. Not the same thing, but still. Um, and... It is the thing of like, yeah, Marty could do a great job with the badge and stuff like that. But it's like, yeah, we're kind of in too deep. And him getting a badge ain't going to protect him or our family because Navarro and his people will gut us. They will find us. And they will obliterate. So, no. So, no. so brought out the information to Schaefer. Schaefer's like, oh, I'm glad there ended up being nothing. And it turns out what this was really about. Because even Wendy started asking questions like, this seems a little too much for just that. So, what's this really about? Basically, there was another engineer who was going to try and spill the beans on his grand Schaefer's grandson's proprietary like it, uh, technology, and it's like, oh, is he an issue? It's like, oh, he's not an issue anymore. It's like, oh, cool, cool. So Wendy unintentionally helped kill some guy because it's like, oh, cool, because he was on the wrong end of all this, and and the uh, proprietary like stuff they talked about it earlier on in their first discussion. Basically, he basically was messing with like voter regist- voting uh, machines to basically make them like be whatever you want them to be and it's like cool so when he's like we helped him with that and even Jim's like yeah none of those votes are definitely going your way so got Schaefer on their side but still like I guess almost being a thing of yeah that's not that's going to be an issue soon enough but you know uh, when it came down to it uh, Wendy and Marty came back being like, yep, uh, everything, uh, the deal's done on both ends. Yeah, let's not talk about the complications that came along with it. Uh, there was this interesting moment, too, between Jonah and Charlotte, where he was basically like, you should go to college. You want to go to college because, what, it's only going to be like a couple years before she gets so angry at you, she fires you, and you're going to be working where for like eight sixty a month. So it's like, yeah. And then Charlotte's looking at him like, what the fuck? Like, don't be an asshole. But it is also him, like, in his own way, it is him looking after her because it's like, right, look at the way she's treating me. Like, you know how mom can be, like, temperamental and weird as she is. Like, none of us are really, like, 100%, like, guaranteed. And you you think, like, oh, she's going to keep you around. Like, you piss her off. Like, she's going to cut you off. So, I don't know. How, I'm curious to see what Charlotte does with that. Will she take it as, like, despite everything, despite you saying it in a very crude and messed up way, I say, I do realize that you're saying this with love and compassion in your heart. So maybe at the end of the day, she will take the advice. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But then finally, we had Darlene rolling up. And at first I was like, is Darlene going to roll up at the sheriff's place just to tell her, like, oh, yeah, Nix is dead or something like that? Because even she was like, even she knows, like, yeah, he's quote-unquote away, you know? Uh, but she rolled up on the Bird family and she confronts Wendy and it's the back and forth between them. It's like, oh, I just want you to know, I know about Nix's body. I know because your own son sold you out. It's like, oh yeah, but Ruth, oh, thank you for letting Ruth work. So it's like, oh, oh, it looks, you look tired. You must've had a long day being like petty back and forth. And then I love this moment where like Darlene was kind of almost threatening her. And then Wendy kind of snapped back. It's like, what are you going to do, Darlene? And Darlene kind of backed up because she was almost freaked out. But then all of a sudden you're like, oh, is she having a heart attack? And she's like called up an ambulance or something. And, and Wendy's like pulling out her phone. I was like, I was like, don't do it, Wendy. Don't do it in the sense of don't not call the ambulance. I know that's a, a double negative. Saying it properly, I wanted her to call the ambulance. I was like, don't do, like, not calling the ambulance ambulance would be the wrong move here. Like, do the right thing. And she's just sitting there. I was like, don't. You're going, how's it going to help you to have Darlene drop dead in front of your place? Because she's too much of a public figure for her just to disappear. Like, people are going to notice. People are going, people are going to wonder. Like, we're going to just say she came over, had a heart attack. You're going to bury the body. Like, what are you going to do? And when she's just there gl- living it up. And then just at the end, as the credits are playing, you hear her dialing. So I was like, okay. You did the right thing. You just wanted her to be like, see, I could have let you die. Don't ever forget you were this close to dying. If it wasn't for me, I'm the reason why you're alive. Remember that. So, oh, God. 
And but that's the thing. Darlene sure as hell gonna remember that. And when the time comes, she's gonna stick it to the Bird family because of you. I'm like, Wendy, man, you gotta gotta calm down, Wendy. You're making two. She's making big balls. Like she's making the moves with the biggest balls. Like, come on, she's got the biggest balls right now. I'm like, don't like. Might not be the time for big balls. Like. No big ball energy here right now. Let's just let's calm it down. It's just like you you going too hard in the paint. So I'm so interested to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But uh, really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.